In this video, we're going to go through the process of using an RTL SDR dongle and an antenna switcher to use your Windows computer as a pan adapter for your non-display HF transceiver. Hi, Jim here, amateur radio call sign Alpha Alpha 7 Juliet Mike. Thanks for joining me on the Gadget Talk channel where I review and examine a variety of electronic gadgets including action cameras, video accessories, and topics like this one, ham radio and shortwave listening devices. If you haven't subscribed, I hope you will and be sure to click on the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. I recently did an unboxing of a no-name antenna switcher I recently got on eBay. If you haven't seen that video, I'd encourage you to take a peek. In this video, we'll be going through the steps you'll need to get going. These steps include the process of getting and installing the free software you'll need to integrate your SDR dongle and PC, setting up some rig control software with your HF transceiver and integrating the software, PC, and transceiver together to generate the waterfall display. First, we'll take a look at how to get the software and install it on your computer. First, go to rtl-sdr.com and go to the software and then supported software tabs. So again, make sure that you look for the hyphen in the name. Uh, RTL-SDR will take you to a different place. So we're going to go to the software. We're going to go to RTL-supported software. And that'll bring us to a big list of software. You'll see the first one is SDR-sharp. And the second one is what we're going to be using because HD-SDR will interface with OmniRig. And so that's what we want to do. So the next thing we want to do is we want to access the official installation instructions, which can be found by clicking on that link. Now I've got that downloaded, and here's what it looks like. And so it'll give you the basic information that you need, but primarily the value in this particular um, uh, PDF file is that it has active links to all of the things that we need to download. So that's going to be real handy. So let's take a look at what we're going to need to access. Now the first one we're going to download is this Zadig program and there's the link to get to it. Now I had to install this for SDR Sharp so I have that already on my computer uh, but you go to that link and all we're going to do is download that into your downloads file. What that allows you to do is to um, import the proper driver. Windows will often not import the correct DLL or driver for the RTL SDR dongle. So we're going to use Zadag to do that and we're going to show you that in just a minute. But for now just download it into your downloads directory. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to download the um, HD SDR program and the link for that download is there. And so just click the link and download the program, the installation program, to your downloads folder. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to download the RTL 2832 DLL from uh, the location at this link. And so again, download that by clicking download the file, and um, then we're going to be good to go on that. Now there's one more th piece of software that we're going to need to access, and that is at a different site that's not listed here. And so we're going to go here and you're going to see that we're going to go to um, this site right here, Afreet Software. You can see the address up here. It's dxatlas.com slash Omnirig. And it'll show you the you know current version, the usual things, all the radios that it supports. If we've got your radio listed, it's going to work. So we're going to scroll down to Omnirig so the next thing we're going to do is go to the downloads page to get to the OmniRig download. And so at this point, we're just going to scroll down until we find OmniRig. 
And then OmniRig is right there. It was last updated on um, April 7th of 2019. Click the link, download it again to your downloads folder. And now we've acquired all of the software that we're going to be using um, to get this uh, set up up and running. Okay, so now I've got my desktop displayed and I've put all of my uh, install from my download and put it on a folder on my on my desktop just to to keep things straight and easy so I'll open this folder and the first thing we're going to do is install the Zadig 2.5 um, program that we just downloaded now I've got my um, dongle plugged in right now because uh, Zadig is going to look for that and we need to be able to find that so we'll start Zadig here by double clicking We'll say yes. And now Zadig comes up. Let me minimize that so it's easier for you to see. Now you can see there's nothing in this drop down box. That's because we need to go to options and then we're going to list all of our devices. Now when we drop down, we're going to see that the one we're looking for, it either says, um, the bulk interface zero for example uh, but in our case it says rtl 2838 so that's the one we're looking at and so we would select that and then we can see that right now the driver is this win usb 6.1 and so forth and the one we want is the same one it's because i've already installed the driver um, you're going to get a blank here and you're going to search for the win usb and then this word, instead of saying reinstall driver, will say install driver. And so just install the driver uh, and then you'll be ready to go. So uh, that'll get the driver in to your computer so it can recognize the RTL SDR dongle. Now, because you've put a new driver in, we're going to uh, end Zadig. And then we're going to pull the plug of the, the dongle out and then reinstall it so it installs the driver that we've just uh, put on the computer. Next, we're going to go back here to this. So now here we're going to install the HDSDR software. So again, we'll double click the install. We're going to allow it to work on our computer. We minimize that. And then we'll go through the install wizard, basically accepting the defaults. We're going to read the end user agreement. It's in German. Good luck with that. We'll accept it. We're going to put it in the x86 program files on this computer. We're going to give it the HDSDR name for the shortcut. I want an icon on the desktop, but I don't want it on the quick launch bar, so I'll leave it there. It then gives you a chance to review the choices you've just made and install. It doesn't take long to install, but at this point we are not going to launch the program, so uncheck the box and click Finish. So you can see right here we have got the icon for that um, HDSDR program uh, right here. Now, at this point, we're going to go back to our install folder and we're going to monkey with this particular program right here. So we're going to click on that. We're going to right click and we're going to copy that file. Then we're going to go to the C drive on our computer down here, we're going to go to the x86 program files. We're going to go to the HDSDR folder that we just made in that installation. And we're going to paste that DLL into this folder. We'll use the administrator continue button here. And now we've got that installed right up here in the folder with our HDSDR. We can get out of this. 
And so at this point, we can open up our uh, program because the DLL is there, uh, the driver's there, the SDR dongle is there. So let's open up the folder and we'll see what we have. And so there is our um, program. We've got it came in here at, uh, I'm going to turn the volume down here so you don't have to listen to that. Uh, we've came, come in down there. And so we have our uh, program open and it's reading the, the SDR. And so that's what we have been hoping to achieve. And so we want to check uh, to make sure that we have connected to our uh, SDR. And so we can use this FDR or F8, click on it, and we see that we're using the uh, 2838UHIDIR device, which was the driver we loaded. And we can see that we've got the automatic gain control. This is where you can make changes to that. We'll talk about that later. The sampling rate we can make changes to. Uh, and so forth. But at this point, getting the software loaded was our primary objective, and we've accomplished that. So as I put all this together, the software that we'd downloaded so far, got everything to work, but not to talk to each other. And that's because I was missing this particular piece of software. It's a virtual uh, serial port or virtual USB port, sometimes referred to as a null modem emulator. HRD refers to this and uh, offers a suggestion of COM0COM, which is what we're gonna show. There are commercial versions of this, so the actual one you choose is kind of up to you. So in this case, I've gone to soundforge.net is where it's from under projects and then com0com. Uh, you can see that up here in the uh, URL. If you Google com0com, this is the first uh, site that comes up. So what we're going to do then is we're going to go to files and we're looking for the com0com uh, file here. And so we're going to click on that one. Version 3 is what we're looking for. You see that's the one with the most downloads. It's uh, a couple years old, uh, but that is the most common one. So we're going to click on that. And then you can see what's in there. So you can read, do the README uh, and what have you. So in this case, the one we're going to choose is the one that has the most downloads. And it's the COM0COMX64. I assume that means 64-bit operating system and the one that's signed. Signed is going to get you uh, past some of the security problems in Windows. So it's got a digital signature. So we're just going to download that. After we get that downloaded, we're going to take it from the downloads file on the computer and put it in a folder where it's easier to access and to act upon. So here you can see I have this in a subfolder in a folder I call my ham stuff on this computer. Uh, and I unzipped the file. So this is the download file, the zip. And when you unload it, you get up a, a setup file. It's just a very small file that is either the setup with the 64 engine or an x86 signed file. So we're going to set this up. And so a double click on that will take you through the normal Windows setup stuff, answer yes to the security question, uh, and it will install. And so when it installs, you're going to get this following display. So I've run the setup for COM0COM, and there's really not much setup you want to do for our purposes today. Uh, what comes up uh, as standard is going to work. You can make some changes over here um, to make this null serial line do the various things that uh, you want it to, and it shows the various commands and you know which ones are switched and so forth over here in that display, but we don't care about that. What we're interested in is this first virtual pair. And so what we see here is that we've got COM5 and COM6 that are our first virtual pairs. And we want to write those down because we need to assign one of our pieces of software to COM5 and one of them to COM6. 
So with the Comport software COM0 COM installed and having been run, we can go into our device manager, which you can access by typing device manager down here uh, and taking the choice that Windows finds for you. And you will see then that we have our primary USB port, port three, and where we used to have port four here, now we have the two virtual COM ports. Uh, and so those are virtual COM port five and virtual COM port six. Now the COM zero COM software will give you uh, a pair of ports. Uh, the numbers don't matter. It won't double up on reusable ports. And so depending upon what you have registered in your computer, you may end up here where I was with COM 5 and 6, or you may end up with port 10 and 11. Ultimately, it doesn't matter. You just need to remember what they are. And if you forget, you can find them here in the device manager. So as we go about explaining how we get the various pieces of software to talk to the radio, Here's a graphic uh, image of what we're going to be doing to give you kind of a preview of what these various connections look like. Now, the things that we're going to be dealing with, of course, uh, are Ham Radio Deluxe. I've got that assigned to virtual uh, COM port number five, and I'm using HDSDR as my um, uh, waterfall and scope. HDSDR is a free software that we've talked about already, so we've got that installed ready to go. And I've assigned that via OmniRig to COM port 6. And one of the reasons I like uh, HDSDR is it gives you easy access to OmniRig on your computer and you can make the proper settings. It goes into this virtual COM port within the computer, which allows these two pieces of software uh, to talk to each other, to pass data back and forth, and then using the other COM port, COM port 3 in my case, from Ham Radio Deluxe to my FT450D, then that makes the connection. So any changes I make on my radio is reflected in Ham Radio Deluxe and on HDSDR and vice versa. So this is what we're going to strive to achieve in our connections. So now, let's go back and look at the software and chat a little about some software settings you'll use to connect to the FD450D. I'll put a small picture in picture display of the radio in the corner so you can see the transceiver's reactions to the software inputs and vice versa. As you'll see in a minute, the space behind my radios is kind of uh, compact and so trying to follow along with all these connections on the actual devices would be pretty confusing. So I put together this little drawing to show you what the connections are that I've made uh, to ensure that uh, I've got everything working. Now these are the physical connections for the antenna splitter itself and so I've got a cat control cable coming from a USB port. It's a null cable for Yesu um, uh, RS-232 type ports on the back of this FT450D and it goes from the computer to the radio. I also have uh, a USB cable coming from my RTL-SDR dongle right over here uh, going to the other port on my laptop and uh, so I've got that with an extension because I wanted the, uh, the dongle a little bit away, so away from the uh, computer just to minimize any RF that might be coming from the uh, computer itself. Otherwise, obviously, you can just plug this port into the uh, computer itself. Now, from the other end of my RTL-SDR dongle is the antenna wire, and that comes from an SMA small cable from the back of the antenna switcher, and that cable comes from an SMA uh, style connector on the back of the switcher to the RTL SDR dongle. Next coming from the back of the radio using the, an, the antenna connector and a patch cable, I've got a line going from the radio to the switcher and the switcher then reads um, on the back, it says to the transmitter. And so I've got that. And then my antenna coming in from uh, outside, I've got connected to the antenna output here on the back. Okay, so here is the HDSDR output. I've got the, my antenna from outside, my uh, uh, multi-band 
uh, NFED feeding the transmitter switch and uh, with one output going to my SDR and the other one going to the uh, FT450D. Now, uh, in this case, a couple of things about HDSDR. This is not a tutorial for that. Uh, this is just going to give you a couple things that you want to check. So first, with the SDR device, you want to click on that and make sure that you've got your uh, dongle selected here. If you have more than one connected, which you can do, you can select them using the drop-down box. With the RT RTL SDR, you want to use the Quadrature or the Q input uh, to allow you to do direct sampling and get those signals from the HF bands. Um, and so that's the um, the dongle, so you want to make sure that's that's going. Now, I mentioned earlier that uh, one of the things I like about this is that it gives you direct access to um, OmniRig, and to do that, you go to Options, and then you can select the inputs, uh, various things that you want to configure. There's some videos out there about configuring um, the RTL to uh, uh, get the correct offset if the frequency is just a little off in the computation there. Uh, but the, what we're interested in here is the cap to radio Omni rig. And so you can make the various choices here. Uh, you can set a converter offset if you're doing that. Uh, what's important for me is that I want to um, sync the tune frequency and I want to sync from Omni rig. So if I make a change here, it changes on the radio and I want to sync to um, uh, Omni rig. Uh, if I make a change um, on the radio, that it makes the connection or makes the change here. And then here, I want to make the um, select which of the two Omni rig uh, options or channels, if you will, that I can use. So I'm going to be using rig one in Omni rig. So if I click on Omni rig setup, I see I've got rig one here. Now. Ham Radio Deluxe, in the thing that we'll look at in just a minute, explains that it is expecting from OmniRig, from your SDR radio software, uh, the signal set or the command set from the Kenwood TS-2000. So regardless of the kind of radio you have, you want to set this for TS-2000. Now, I set my uh, HDSDR to COM6. Remember, I've got available COM5 and COM6. I set the baud rate to 9600. I don't know that that matters as primarily I'm talking to Ham Radio Deluxe, not to my transmitter. I've got data bits, no parity, stop to stop bits, and these other settings. These work, so I'm going with them. So I can go okay with that. So let me put a picture of my uh, uh, radio and uh, my setup here in my ham shack on the, this in the corner so you can see what I'm doing as the two things happen uh, together. So as you can see, if I want to make a change, I can make a change and I want to go say to 20 meters, that's going to take me up into about 14 megahertz. So I can click on 20 megahertz and you can see that my radio goes up to the same uh, frequency that my um, HDSDR uh, radio control. So you can see that I've got frequency uh, control uh, between the two. Now let me reach up and spin the dial on this and you can see that I have control going back to the HDSDR um, from the radio. So I've got a two-way communications happening here, which is what it was that my goal was. So up here, I can make changes to the, the modes that are, that are coming in. I can make a change to AM. You saw that it turned to AM there on the, uh, uh, the radio, the lower sideband, the upper sideband, and so forth. So I've got a certain amount of control here from the HD SDR software directly to my radio. However, my plan is primarily to use either the radio's controls or uh, Ham Radio Deluxe. So Let's minimize this and go into Ham Radio Deluxe and see what we've got going on there. Okay, so with HRD Rig Control up, you can see that I can make changes here and it makes the changes on the radio. Uh, I can change the mode, it's USB. I can do a drop down. Uh, user USB is data, 
state. So if I wanted to, you know, set this for FT8 or something, I could do that. Otherwise, uh, uh, upper sideband in the 20 meter is the traditional way. Fine tuning occurs here, and then um, broader tuning occurs on this second um, row down. And then here you can make changes to many of the things that you would have to access via uh, menus on the radio. So I can make changes to my RF gain here, uh, my audio frequency gain, turn the radio speaker up that way, uh, make changes to noise reduction and the various other uh, controls down here on these sliders. Now, when this comes up, the first time you use it, you're going to get a connect dialog. And there are a couple of things I want to point out to you there. So first, I've got this one. This one I am setting as a 450 uh, radio. I'm using this the COM port that is not virtual, which is COM3. Uh, I've got 4800 baud going to the radio. Now, with this radio, you have an extended menu that you have to select in the menu choices. And then it's going to give you some of the cap control stuff. So, so in the extended menu, you can set the baud rate and a couple of other uh, cap control related things. Uh, on your 450D, and these need to match. And so uh, we've got that. We would then click Connect, uh, and um, it would connect to the radio. Uh, if you need to make a new one, a new preset, you would get this dialog, and there you would make the changes of the various things that you want to do. I am only have one radio, so I'm going to do the preset that I have. It's working, so I'm not going to mess with it. So that's your first connection, the rig control connection to the radio. The second connection you're going to make is to that virtual COM port. And to do that, we're going to go up to Tools. We're going to go down to Hardware. And we're going to go to Third Party Serial Ports. Now, uh, read through this introduction because there's some interesting things here that will help you. So it gives you some examples of serial port software, including COM, zero COM, which is what we used, uh, VSPE, which is a paid version of the device that'll do the same thing, a software program. Uh, and it tells you to search for that. In the description that follows, you're going to be using the two ports that are created. Um, and so it gives you a kind of a walkthrough. In this case, their example, they're using COM port 11 and 12. We, of course, use 5 and 6 gives you some speeds, stop bits, parities, and then it'll give you some of the protocols in the Kenwood selection you're going to want to use on OmniRig. So this is a good set of uh, explanations that are uh, available to you right here within the program when you go to your third-party serial port choice. Now, we want to enable the port, we want to connect when Ham Radio Deluxe starts, and then we want to set the specifics. And so you can see that I've got it in COM5. Um, I don't have a mode. Um, I've got a 9600, which matches my 9600 over in OmniRig. Um, and you can see that it's passing data back and forth. And so with these set, I, it really never gets to OK, or I haven't found it to get to OK. It just continues to read. And so with this set, I'm just going to X out of it. I've got those things set. And you can see these flashing so that uh, you can see that it made some changes to the computer. And so again, I'm in the 20 meter band. If I want to go to 40, click it. So you can see that both my radio and my HRD rig control uh, changed. Now, let's open up our uh, HDSDR. And we can see down here that it too changed. Um, and we're back in the 40 meter area at 7.1 uh, megahertz. Now, the next thing we're going to do is just, and this is entirely technique, uh, and that is for you to uh, set up the screen. Now, if you've got two screens, that's even better. Uh, in this case, I've only got, I'm working on a laptop. And so I'm going to bring my scope up here to the top, and then I'm going to cover the controls with my ham radio deluxe so now i have these windows arranged with my hdsdr in the back and i've got my rig control on the front and so if i go in here to view 
um, I can take some of the, uh, the icons off, give me a little bit more screen space um, here. So I have access to my band selections here, my fine tuning within each band, uh, my channels, and then all of the other little commands here into my radio that are normally accessed either via button, the multifunction button, or uh, and menus, or directly from uh, buttons on the face of the radio. Now the last thing I want to show you here is the uh, SDR switch actually working. We've talked about all this software and, and all the rest, and so uh, you know this started out with uh, a conversation about the SDR switch itself. So uh, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to try to find something in the, um, the 40 meter band. I'm up here in the phone band of the amateur of the bands, and so just make a, a, a very low power uh, test statement and so you can see that the SDR switch uh, does work. You're going to notice the light's going to change from green to bright red uh, as it grounds out the circuit to my SDR receiver. So let's do a quick test on that. Alpha Alpha 7 Juliet mic testing. Alpha Alpha 7 Juliet mic testing. So you can see up here, um, because everything is so close together, it did pick up some of the um, transmission, but most of it got uh, grounded out. You saw that the, uh, the red light came on while I had the microphone pushed to talk down, and uh, as you can see, since my SDR is still uh, producing a signal up here in the pan adapter, it did what it was supposed to, and that it did not. Um, um, burn up the front end. So um, there we are. We've got the SDR uh, HF antenna switcher in line with the FT450D and we've got all of the pieces of software we need to generate this nice pan adapter display up and running on a little laptop. So let's move away from the computer display and we'll do a couple of closing comments. All this looks pretty easy, and it is when looking back on the process. The fact is, however, there were a couple of fits and starts getting the settings right for everything to play well together. The biggest thing was setting up the virtual COM port. HDSDR has to communicate with Ham Radio Deluxe, and Ham Radio Deluxe has to talk to the radio. That means the settings between HRD and the transceiver have to be set right. The FT450D has an extension menu that needs to be turned on to access the various CAT variables. Be sure to set those variables. Next, get your rig control software working first. Since HRD is connected to two different radios, you need to configure both. The first one is via the standard connect button on HRD rig control. As we saw earlier, the second one is via the tools, hardware, third-party serial port option on HRD rig control. I like HDSDR not only because the user interfaces make sense to me and the displays are very colorful, it also makes it easy to access OmniRig, which connects to Ham Radio Deluxe via the virtual COM port. When your transmitter, rig control software, and HDSDR are all connected, you have all the benefits of a nice, large pan adapter with waterfall and spectrum scope. You can make changes via the radio, the rig control software, or HDSDR software. That's pretty cool. Last. With the antenna switcher in the feed, you've got transmit protection for your SDR dongle. So to wrap this up, here are a couple of observations about the switcher and this whole pan adapter process. First, the switchers seem to work pretty well. When keying the mic, the red LED light on the switcher lit up, signifying that the SDR lead had been grounded out. You want to make a firm press on the push to talk button as the switcher will flicker back and forth if you've not got a solid transmit input. 
I've been playing with my mic gain to get a good output. When using FT8, the switcher clicks over promptly and stays lit until the transmit period is over. I exchanged an email with my eBay seller as I thought I was getting quite a bit of signal loss with this switcher. A factory rep got back to me right away via the seller and said the loss through the switcher was no more than 3 decibels. I've played around a bit with the splitter both in and out of the feed line and haven't noticed too much of a loss on the display in HDSDR. What I still need to figure out is why when the splitter is in the feed line that the reception and decoding of FT8 signals all but disappears. Since FT8 is a low signal digital mode, that seems kind of strange. More detective work is needed on that. A simple barrel connector is all that's needed to isolate the switch. Ultimately, if you're really interested in having a pan adapter for your older non-display HF rig, the setup described here can get you up and running for under $100, assuming you have a Windows computer. Add a bit more if you plan on using and don't have Ham Radio Deluxe. Hey, if you found this video helpful, please click on the thumbs up button below the video and subscribe to the Gadget Talk channel. Click the bell icon to be notified when I post new videos. Thanks for watching and 73.